Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode, we're gonna be solving a Physics 7a practice problem on the topic of modeling with kinetic and potential energies. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe as that really helps promote and grow this channel. This is the problem that we are gonna be working on today. So we have a ball that is rolling along the path below without slipping on the graph below. Um, we have to plot the total energy, the kinetic energy translational, potential energy, and the potential energy due to the spring. The rotational kinetic energy has been provided. Your plots should describe the entire interval from rest compressed against the spring to stopped at the top of the ramp. So that's going to be important, the word stopped. Uh, fill in the table with the energies you plotted in the order you plotted them, explaining both, both your choice of the order of plots and how you determine the shape of each energy plot. All right, so as you can see, I have the uh, plot over here. So this is height and this is the ramp going up, down and then up again. And this is the energy. As the problem stated, they already provided us with kinetic energy rotational and the problem also provided us with the final value for uh, gravitational potential energy. It's just one value, but they, they did provide it and it's gonna be important for us. Now, the initial setup here is that there is a spring which is compressed, so there's some energy there. I don't know how much, but it's there. And then the spring uh, decompresses, basically launching this ball to the right, the ball goes up, down, and then up all the way over here, and then it stops. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that word uh, because super important, stops. So it's not moving, it's not rotating and it's not moving. Uh, we have kinetic energy rotational plotted um, rotational kinetic energy is something that we explore more in 7b, but it's basically the energy due to something um, rotating. It's very similar to kinetic energy translational, except kin translational is the energy due to moving in space, and rotational is the energy moving, um, you know, with, with reference to an axis, the axis of rotation. We don't really have to worry about it as it's given to us, but it's basically related to translation. Or it's basically like the, you know, translational kinetic energy is cousin or something. All right, so how do we start? Well, I would say that the easiest way to start this problem is just by um, looking at this value over here and noticing that at this point in time, at this time interval, the ball here is completely stopped. If the ball is completely stopped, that means that um, we don't have kinetic energy rotational because if it's stopped, it's not rotating. If that, that is why this is equal to zero. But uh, more importantly, the, there's also no kinetic energy translational. If it's stopped, it's not moving left, right, up or down. So that means that our final kinetic energy, we are expecting that to be zero as well. So let me just... So this is kinetic energy um, translational, which is going to be zero. Now, I don't know how it's gonna look the rest of the way, but I know that it's going to be zero over here. So now the next thing is in terms of total energy, I already have my answer. So energy total because the only options here are basically, let me just grab another marker, uh, potential energy spring. So at this point at the end, we don't have potential energy of the spring because the spring has already decompressed a long time ago. So that should also be zero as well. We don't have any kinetic energy translational because it's not moving. Uh, potential gravity is up here. That basically means that this value is also the total value for the entire system, right? Because total energy is the addition of all of the energies and I already know rotational, zero, 
kinetic translational zero, potential energy zero. That must mean that this value is the total energy of the system. This is a closed system. We are ignoring friction. That means that uh, the total energy is conserved. So I'm just gonna draw one big line over here and this is gonna be total energy. So at every single point in time, all of my energies need to add up to the total value. And that would be the first thing that I figured out. At the final point, uh, Ka rotational, Ka translational, potential energy spring are all equal to zero. Therefore, uh, my E value is equal to potential energy final. And also closed system, so it just stays constant. Okay, so the next thing that we can see here is that it, just how they did their um, graph, you know, I think that the next thing that we're gonna plot is just this uh, potential energy. Because as we can see, over here, if you have exactly five, one, two, three, four, five units of height, the energy is five tick marks. One, two, three, four, five. So that is why it's here. And potential energy, you know, the only indicator for potential energy is the height. So basically what I'm trying to say is that if we use the tick marks as a reference and we know that potential energy is a linear function, it's just m, g, y, then that means that there is a one-to-one -one relationship between the height in tick marks and the energy in tick marks. So the only thing that I'm going to do is just copy this exact same thing and that is going to be my potential energy graph. So it starts here, goes to zero. Then it's zero over here. Then it goes up um, two and a half tick marks. So one, two and a half. Like this. And then it's zero over here. So zero over here. And now I get to describe this P E gravitational from looking at graphs. There is a one to one relationship. between uh, height and energy tick marks. So uh, the plot of PE graph is just the plot of the ramp. There we go. So that's basically how we figure out this uh, potential energy. Okay, so now what do we have to figure out next? Well, I would say that the spring is also pretty easy to do because the spring, uh, you know, once the spring has decompressed, then that basically means that the spring is over, right? So the spring uh, doesn't really do anything past that point. Uh, also, another thing is that um, at the very beginning of the experiment, the only thing that has energy would be the spring because at the beginning of the experiment, height is equal to zero, so we don't have any potential energy. The ball is not rotating, so we don't have any uh, rotational kinetic energy. The ball is also not moving. Velocity is equal to zero, so we don't have any kinetic energy. So that must mean that all of the energy belongs to the spring. 
So this is going to be the initial value over here. Now, once the spring gets decompressed, which I'm just gonna symbolize. Now, because I have like this shape, parabola shape over here, I'm just gonna draw the opposite, which is a parabola going the other way. And once the spring has decompressed and the ball is just separated and just like uh, rolling around, the spring is just decompressed and it actually stays decompressed. So the spring stays at zero like this. Uh, so let's just go ahead and put that at t is equal to zero only energy is spring energy so e total is just p e spring initial and then afterwards Uh, P E spring is equal to zero everywhere else. Okay, so now the only thing that we have left would be your our kinetic energy. Now kinetic energy we already figure out the beginning, which is zero because the velocity is equal to zero, and we also know what the end point is going to be because it's also equal to zero. But how do we figure out what the value is going to be everywhere in between? Well, for kinetic energy, we're going to use conservation of energy. Like I said, this is a closed system, which basically means that all of these energies have to add up to the total at every single point in time. What do I mean? Well, for example, on this time interval, uh, this plus this is equal to the total. Now let's take this time interval, for example. So at this time interval, we have um, PE is equal to uh, two, what is it? One and a half thick marks. So we have one and a half. And then rotational is one and a half. The addition is equal to three, one, two, three. That must mean that we need another two in order to make it all the way to five because they have to add up to five. So my uh, kinetic energy is actually gonna be here at this point in time. So that two plus 1.5, 1 1.5 is gonna be equal to um, to five and that's basically what we have to do so we're gonna put this like this okay so now let's analyze this dashed point so at this dash point we have zero plus zero plus two um and then it has to be equal to five so that means that kinetic energy has to be equal to exactly three Let me just, uh, should be like, there we go, straight line. Yeah, so that's zero plus zero plus two plus three is equal to five and energy is conserved in this dash line. Now let's just do it here in the middle, zero plus zero plus two. That means that it has to be three here again. Over here is going to be the same zero plus zero plus two plus three. And that's how you get it to be equal to five. So energy is conserved on this part and I basically just have to keep going. I don't even know why I did it from right to left. You can do it the other way. It's exactly the same principle. It just has to um, add up. So now we have, let's just do over here in the middle. So we have um, zero plus one half plus two and a half plus what is equal to five. So that would be two. So let me just, so it's two over here. So let's just, let's 
like this so that we have one half plus two and a half is equal to three plus two is equal to five energy is conserved over here energy is already cons energy is conserved because we have three plus two uh two plus three i'm sorry is equal to five now let's just do this uh, chunk over here so we have zero plus zero plus two plus one is equal to five that would be three so like this and now basically we just have to make it up over here uh and we know this is a zero so it's just gonna end up being something like this and that's it so that's basically how we figure out the translational kinetic energy energy has to add up again uh, the total has to be equal to five at every single point over here it's equal to five over here if you add them up equal to five over here if you add them up uh, so that's how we do it and this is the end of this problem i believe do we have a part b nope no part b so anyways, guys, uh, if you found this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps our channel. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I'll do my best to get to them and I'll see you guys on the next video.